Right, so we've got a quick introduction to probability. Uh, there are three general types of probability. The first one is theoretical. We also have experimental. And then a third one you might not have thought about before, which is subjective or observational. So theoretical, that's the th one we're, we're most likely to use. It's talking about things that we think should happen based on the knowledge that we have. So it's the number of successful outcomes divided by the possible total outcomes we could have would give us our probability. Experimental is when it's based upon actually doing an experiment and see what happens. And in that case, we call it relative frequency. And we record the number of times that we got success and we divide it by our number of trials. Subjective and observational is making predictions based on past experiences or expertise um, and then, you know, it's, it's things like predicting the weather or um, how much crime you think would happen in an area. There's no hard and fast rules about it, but you would look at things that have happened before, how you expect things to change within that area and what's going to happen later on. Most of the time we're going to be dealing with this theoretical probability. So let's have a look at uh, the different sorts of notation that you might need to use. So P brackets A, that means the probability of an event A happening. A with this little dash at the top is the notation for the complement of A. That means everything where A is not happening. It's the opposite of A. So the probability of A plus the probability of the complement of A must then add up to 1 because all probabilities have to add up to 1. Um, then if you rearrange that you want the probability of the complement would be 1 minus the probability of the event happening. And a possibility or sample space is any kind of diagram that contains the information that we're talking about. So this could be for example a Venn diagram, something like this, or it could be a two-way table, something like that. OK, so we'll have a look at a couple of examples. Um, we've got a fair four-sided spinner with the sides labelled 1 to 4. It's spun twice and the total's written down, and we want to find these two probabilities. So first of all, we need to draw ourselves up some sort of sample space that shows us what's happening. The easiest one with this one is a two-way table. So looking for how we could get a score that's more than 3. That's all of those with the pink dot next to it. There are 13 of them out of 16 possible um, scores, so we get 13 out of 16. Getting a 3 or a 4 is those ones that there that are circled with that uh, green loop, so there are five ways that we could get a 3 or a 4, so it's 5 out of 16. Right, example 2. We've got a class of 35 students, 19 take physics, 18 take chemistry, and 3 don't take either of them. We're choosing a student at random and we want to work out these probabilities. I think the best diagram for this one is a Venn diagram. So we've got the physics and chemistry. There are three people that don't take any of them. Now, if we add up that 19 and 18 for the physics and the chemistry, that comes to a total of 37, which is um, too much. So we can work out what the overlap is there. If we start with 35 take away 3, because the, there was 3 that don't do either of them, that's 32. That means we've got an overlap there happening of 5 because 37 is 5 more than 32. Once we've got that 5 in that overlap space, we can work out the other two by taking that 5 off of the totals for those uh, subjects. So physics and chemistry, there's 5 people doing that out of 35, which cancels down to 1 seventh. And people that only take chemistry without the physics is that 13 out of 35.